Now I'm joined in the Harvey Norman Lounge on Pet Corner today by vet Alex Melrose and we're talking about a well-known disease in humans but one that can also affect our pets. Morning Alex. Good morning. So we are talking about uh, heart disease. Heart disease, yeah, in cats and dogs. Yeah. So well, how can it affect them? Well, pretty much anything you can think of in humans, pets can get. So it's a similar kind of setup, you know, and uh, you can think of uh, congenital problems yeah. where, where they have weaknesses with their heart muscle. To, to valve disease, where the little valves in the heart don't close properly, right through to all sorts of things that, that you or I could hypothetically get so if we weren't so fit. It's all the same sort of thing, yeah, if, were, <laughs> if we weren't such buff athletes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it can be fatal in your pets as well then? Yeah, very much so, yeah. So <clears throat> a lot of the time, um, by the time we see these guys, they'll, they'll have problems with their breathing, um, they'll be carrying a lot of fluid in their chest, um, and you can jump in. The, the cool thing about the cardiac disease is that you can jump in and within hours you can transform that patient. Well, I never thought I'd hear someone say the cool thing about cardiac disease. Um, what are some of the causes then, or is it just an old age thing for your pets? Well, it's a, it's a mixture. So, you know, you might have been born with um, heart muscle that was just slightly abnormal and it didn't conduct um, electrical patterns properly. Um, the, the valves of your heart, certainly, as you age, in, in cats and dogs, you know, the, the valves start to not close perfectly. As the, as the heart shape distorts slightly, the valves yeah. will, will become distorted and they won't shut properly. So the heart becomes not as efficient at pushing blood around your body. So you mentioned the um, the breath thing, obviously, is yeah. one of the symptoms. What yeah. sort of other symptoms can you look for in your animal? Yeah, sometimes it's more subtle. Uh, you, you know, the trouble is if it's just a reduction in exercise tolerance, so they're not as keen to walk and not as keen to do exercise, people will often put that down to ageing. Yeah. And, and it may not be at all. It may be that they're just getting a low level of fluid build up in their chest. And at that level, you know, we can do a lot very quickly to help them. Are there some advanced sort of things you should be looking at for as well? Yeah, a lot of coughing, sudden coughing, um, obviously collapse. Mm. It's quite a common one. Um, a good thing to do is to to look at how much the chest is moving on, on your on your cat or your dog, and if it's if, if you can see they're putting a lot more effort in, especially abdominal effort, mm. that'll be a real clue that something's changed in that chest cavity. Can you actually give CPR to yeah. animals, to your dog and cat? Yeah, yeah. So what do you I don't do? want you to try it at home. No, no I'm not going to, but that's something that yeah. you can do mm. as, a, as a vet, mm -hmm. but not something that we should do if our animal collapses. Not really. I think I think the best thing to do in that situation is just to get them in the car and start driving to your closest vet as quickly as possible. Yeah. But yeah, we can, we literally, I mean, I've done it plenty of times. We, very similar to a human model, you, you you know, you, you're doing chest compressions. Yeah. You have to go pretty hard out with that, but not too much. You break the ribs. Which is why you need to do it and not us. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, even in the, in the worst case scenario, in a very large dog, like a, mm. a Great Dane or something, I've, sometimes you have to actually open the chest cavity and okay. compress the heart directly. All right. Because you can't, you can't, you can't compress the chest hard And that's not something that we'll be doing at no, home. Um, no. How do you test for heart disease at the clinic? Uh, hey, great, great question. These days you can actually, there's some blood markers, so you can blood test for mm -hmm. early heart disease, which is a really cool, uh, you know, sort of thing that's just become available in the last few years. Um, certainly we'll have good listen, and that, that's what you rely on the most, is listening for crackling, listening to fl mm. fluid, listening to the rhythm of the heart. And what about best treatment then, once you found out your animal does have some sort of heart disease? Yeah, well, usually you've got a combination of things. You're going to look at diet, you're going to reduce the salt intake, you're going to try and reduce weight if, if weight's too high. All the things you do with humans. Yeah, and then you're going to, eventually you're going to reach for diuretics to reduce the fluid load. And what about prevention? Uh, Watch the diet. <laughs> yeah, not letting them get heavy. Yeah. Um, and then getting them checked regularly so that if it does start to happen, you get it really early and then you reduce the load on the heart early with, with medication. So they can recover? Yeah, they can recover. Um, you know, once they collapse, you're in a bit of trouble. Yeah. But having said that, I, I've had patients come in that have collapsed and I've thought, man, they're, they're about to die. And, We've turned them around with medication and they've lived for a couple of years one and of had a good life. One of those nine lives. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, yeah. actually. Really interesting. Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Always interesting. And don't forget, if you go to energyplus.co.nz, enter the code PET Corner, you will receive 25% off Energy Plus products today. And now to our pet of the week. Congratulations to Indy and Eddie. $50 to spend at petpost.co.nz is on its way to your owner, Donna from Greenhide. And if you would like to enter your pet, and it could be any type of pet too, just upload a pig on our Facebook page.